All right, guys, I just want to do a quick update of my little, ch I don't want to say challenge, but just a goal that I had, and it was to retrain and refresh my thoughts on the way I feel about watches. And I happened to have picked the Tudor Black Bay 41 in blue dial. I don't know why. It wasn't like I was trying to intentionally do anything with this exact watch. It was more of a... A challenge I just wanted to put upon myself but since I did pick this watch I've actually bonded with this watch and I want to cover five things real quick that I have learned to absolutely love about this exact watch that I'm not sure I would have had I not done this now we're day 24 I'm going to go the entire month and then next month I'm going to switch up so there's a couple other videos I'm going to make about this whole process. I just wanted to get this one out there and give you guys a little update. This isn't the video where I'm gonna show like what kind of wear I've had on it because I've worn this thing every day, all night, showers, sleeping, working, everything. I have done a strap change. I've worn it a lot on the bracelet and I've worn it a lot on this strap mill Canada vulcanized rubber. I did just pick up a crown and buckle chevron strap. Um, I just opened it today though so I almost feel like it might be a tad short, so I'm not sure if this is going to work. I'm going to play with it a little bit, and we'll see how it goes. But right out of the, uh, let's just cover the five things real quick, and then we can wrap this video up. We'll keep it short. So first thing, now keep in mind I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist. So 41 for me personally works. So it's 41 by like 50 or whatever. Um, but I think overall the case size is actually slight deceptive. Um, with first look, it does look kind of chunky compared to, you know, smaller watches um, or, you know, normal size watches. Even in its category of 41 by 50, it appears larger in many cases, I think mostly because of the slab side of the case. It, and that's a Tudor thing, right? They just look a little bigger than if it were like a rounded case that you would see like on the Explorer case or something like that. So, but really, you're talking uh, case size, I want to say one of the things I like about it is that it is deceptive because it does look larger than it really is. It's 41 by 50, and I'm not saying that's small, but here's one thing that is. It's like 11 millimeter thick. That is not super thick for a sport watch. 22 millimeter lug widths, um, and then the bracelet tapers down to 20. It's, so it's, I really like it. Oversized crown, super easy to operate, and it looks great on this watch. So my number one is the Deceptive case size. It works for me, I like it. There's even a 36 millimeter option for this if you have a smaller wrist. That one does the same thing. It looks bigger than the 36, but that can work on a lot of people's wrists. I can wear the 36 and it looks normal. So number two, the clean and simple design. You guys know typically I like a date on my watch. I love the simplicity of this. I like the smile of the self-winding um, printed on there and then the rotor. The shield, the Tudor, the Geneve, all of that. Very simple, tastefully done. Swiss made at the bottom. You have your indices. And then even the indices, still coupled with the snowflake hand, still seems simple to me even though you have a triangle, circles, and bars. So you have many different shapes going on here, but yet it's still seems simple so it's a nice balance i think and i really like that i think personally i could be wrong let me know what you guys think in the comments i think this is a very timeless design i think it'll hold up very well number three also kind of ties in with what i previously mentioned i absolutely love the snowflake hands i don't think i know a lot of people have mentioned they hate them um there's a lot of people that are on another camp where they're like i hated them and then I, for some reason, converted into loving them. I'm in this third camp where I've always loved snowflake hands, and I still do, even more so. They're super legible. I think they're very unique. I mean, you have, obviously, homage watches with them. But really, when you see a snowflake handset, you instantly know Tudor in the same fashion that you would think of a Mercedes-style handset as a Rolex. Obviously, there's all kinds of imitations, but... Really, when you see it, you instantly think that brand, and it's very distinctive. I love that about it. Number four, affordable, okay? I know that's a relative thing. It's affordable for a luxury watch. 
What makes this a, a luxury watch is probably my number five, which is it's tied to Rolex, but really it's affordable on many levels. It's affordable because it is a lower priced luxury watch at 3000 that's brand new. Um, if you buy it pre-owned, you're probably talking somewhere between $18 and $2,200. I think that's a solid option for an entry-level luxury watch that is definitely affordable in that category. Also, the long-term ownership of this is also going to be affordable. This has an ETA 2824 in it, so the service intervals are going to be easier to do with you know more local or whatever watchmaker you choose, and the cost of actually working on that movement is going to be more affordable. So it's affordable now and it's affordable later. So, and then my number five, obviously it's tied to Rolex. Tudor has definitive ties to Rolex, right? Um, so, you know, would Tudor be as popular as they are if they weren't? 100% no. It's still a great watch, but would they even really exist um, I mean, that's all hypotheticals. We can't even really talk about it that way. The only reason they do exist is because of the Rolex and the, the founder. So um, I love the watch, guys. This challenge has only solidified itself in my collection, and I really want to wear it even longer. I'm going to stop at the 30 days, and I'm going to switch to a different watch, and we'll talk about that in a future video but I could easily just keep wearing this watch. Is it a one watch collection type watch? I think for a lot of people it could potentially be, but when I say one watch, there's exceptions to that. I don't think any of us, if you're watching this video, you are not capable of one watch, neither am I. So we'll talk about that in a future video as well. I just wanted to share this right now. And it's been darn near 50-50 on bracelet and on strap. So the watch is versatile on strap options. This isn't even a fitted one. They have fitted straps, rubber straps. I really like the rubber straps on this. It made it very easy to use on a daily basis for my job. I would like to try it on some cloth, so hopefully I can make this work. If not, I'll find another option. I was looking to buy the actual Tudor branded NATO, but um, it seems like I'm having to jump through hoops to do it. And I ordered this thing and I had it in two days, so um, hopefully it's long enough. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next vid.